How's it going, Robot Wars fans? Hardcore Kid here with another edition of the Hardcore Podcast. To my left is fellow reviewer Otaku Nate. Yeah, and we have to get through this hit key quick because uh, both of us actually have work today and we have to be at our respective spots by 5 o'clock. Yeah, work, unfortunately, is more important than play. So that's life. Let's just go through some quick tidbits. Um, Series 10 has been announced... Um, with, uh, featherweights this time. Yes. We're going to be getting featherweights. I don't know if this means that they're going to be changing the format of the series, going back to single elimination. Maybe. Maybe they'll, they'll have, like, a, they'll just have, a, like, a separate match for, like, uh, because usually on the live circuit, they, they just have, they just stick all the featherweights into one match at once and just see which one outlasts the other. Well, uh, I just hope it doesn't end up like the cruiserweight matches on Raw. Yeah. I don't know. Austin Aries is back. Yeah, um, we're, we're, this is going to be a quick episode, but it's not really that much of a big deal. There were a lot of very quick fights in this uh, heat. I, I, and, and I believe a candidate for fastest Robot Wars match ever. I'm pretty sure someone's going to time it, and they're going to say that it was the fastest fight ever. Though... I think D versus Kadena Machina from the Celeb Special has a uh, quickest KO. <laughs> In a way, although D kind of sort of was moving at the end, but yeah, that's beside the point. This episode, um, the, the the first heat, we, we uh, finally got to see uh, robots like Aftershock and uh, Terahertz come back, and Heat A uh, may be a candidate for most exciting first episode of Robot Wars ever. We saw... Parts flying, robots flying, robots flying out of the arena. It was a lot of fun. This robot was a one-robot show, basically. And that was... Well, technically you could say that for the last episode, too. Yeah, but... Uh... There, there was more going on than just that one robot, because, you know, we had the excitement of Gabriel Stroud uh, winning his first ever fight. Um, <clears throat> we had uh, all the drama from John Reed... <laughs> Dave Laurie getting his time to shine. Shout out to Dave. Yeah, but um, this episode, um, there were some fast knockouts. There was a lot of moments that really kind of depressed me. There were some terrible judges' decisions. Well, we'll we'll, we'll get to those. Oh soon. my god. Anyway, so uh, yeah, let's uh, let's start off with the melees. Yeah, first let's, up, first up is uh, Behemoth versus Eruption versus Hobgoblin versus Cobra. Yeah, um, I feel bad for Hobgoblin. I mean, I, I did too. The, the first Egg Beater in Robot Wars, and it just lasts five, ten seconds. Well, the problem with uh, Hobgoblin, you know, even if it didn't have any spinners in its battle, it was unbelievably sluggish. Yeah, it looked like it really couldn't turn. Yeah, it, it seemed like it was having maneuverability issues. I mean, like that it could only go in a straight line, and it... Yeah. And there was no steering. Yeah. And uh, Cobra... Um, Cobra originally... Uh, uh, was originally Brutus, or it was on the it was Brutus, Brutus yes. team. They got a new claw on. Didn't really work all that well, but... Um, you know they were in there just to have fun and just go crazy. Cause... And go crazy Cobra did, because they were zooming all around the arena, crashing into things. Yep. Getting, fli- this... getting flipped by Eruption, flipped by the Floor Flipper. All flipped by Behemoth. Insanity. If this was any other heat, though, Cobra would have gone through to the head-to-heads. Sure. Hell, I think it could have beaten Aftershock, because... Eh, I don't know. Those go-kart wheels look pretty exposed. Well, it's it's the all it has to do is just get under Aftershock's front and slam it into a wall or something. Maybe. Um, also, uh, an interesting feature, uh, we, saw, we saw the pit a, a bit more. Now, uh, actually... We we have yet to see any robot go down the pit this season. I uh, I think there was one robot that wound up in the pit, um, but the pit hasn't really been a go to for disposing no, of robots. And, um, th- this uh, with this new feature with the pit with the uh, pit and the uh, rogue house robot uh, thing, there's now a timer for the pit. Like um, when you press it, it goes down and stays down for about ten seconds, and then it goes back up. This this happened a couple times in this match. Uh, Cobra, I believe, hit the pit release, went down, then went back up. Behemoth hit it, it went down, went back up. And this was the first melee of this series to end in a judge's decision. And ultimately, the two robots that we expected to go through, Behemoth and Eruption, 
They went through. Yep. C- Cobra, it put in a plucky performance, but it was obvious who was going to win. Yeah. I, I, I hope that uh, the Cobra team comes back again. And uh, yes, I can say their names. I also hope that Johan Vanderloo and Johan Van Leverloo. I really <laughs> hope I'm... Uh, you can make a poem out of that. Hey, <laughs> hey! Uh, if you want to talk about crazy names, you know, I'll show you some hockey players that have crazy names. All right. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it... I hope that we see them again. Cobra is a fierce-looking machine. And again, if it was in any other heat, I think it could have made it through to the head-to-heads. So let's move on to the next melee. It was Push to Exit versus PP3D versus Draven versus Cherub. I am now convinced that ever since uh, Sabretooth won, finally won matches, Draven has caught the Sabretooth curse. Because it just can't win a match. And I... I don't remember its fight against King B Remix. Uh, it uh, it lost there too. King B, uh, King, King B, King B p- picked it up by the forks, put it in the pit, and yeah, and it's like Draven. We really haven't seen much out of the draw of Draven, and that, that's because of um, the bottom one. That's the one that operates all the crushing power. PP three D just broke it. it, it it's like. Really, there was there wasn't much uh, that Draven could grab onto because a lot of the robots were just too big. And then we had the other machine that went out, Push to Exit. Oh, this was uh, upset. I mean, Push to Exit went, went went out just lightning fast, just going in, get, getting in underneath Cherub and everybody. And then PP3D uh, hit it a couple times and then just died. It's, it's a shame. It, it, I believe it KO'd both uh, Draven and Push to Exit because, at the same uh, time. Dra- Draven... Uh, I believe Shunt uh, hit, hit it with the axe, and I think that immobilized Dra- Draven, and PP3D just died, and uh, what else? Um, not, not much Cherub, else. It was, it Cherub was a sh- did absolutely nothing, you and... Know, I give I give many props to Cherub, because I, I really do think people underrate it, despite its rather fluky performance, but... If if you if you see it in the uh, live circuit, it's actually pretty solid. Like, look up its match against Tornado and Alien Destructor. It manhandles Tornado. Mm. So yeah, that was it. I think the forks on Cherub need to be a little longer, but that's well, just me. But uh, bye bye to push to exit, and it's the D to the R to the A V E N. You think it's going to win, then it gets knocked out again. It's Dravenlicious. Also, before we go forward, a shout-out to Vote Saxon 07 uh, yeah. Stephen McCullough. He hey. was with the uh, Team Aztec. Um, go check out his YouTube channel. He does awesome reviews. Uh, he just started a new interview series, uh, Talking with Aztec, where he interviews Roboteers. He just did an interview with Ian and Will Thomas of Aftershock. Yeah, it, uh, really cool. So let's move on to the head-to-heads. First match was Behemoth versus Eruption. The rivalry continues. Not really much to say. Um, Behemoth, they tried. They got that new scoop underneath uh, Eruption a few times, but once Eruption was able to corner Behemoth and just fling it all over the place, Behemoth was pretty much helpless. And then all uh, Eruption had to do was flip Behemoth over again, and then again, right over the wall. The first OOTA of the night... Certainly not the last. Michael Oates should uh, hold up, should pull a Goldberg and start holding up fingers with how many opponents he's beaten. <laughs> he's beaten quite a few. Uh, well, I should say Uda's. OOTA? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many Uda's he's got. He's, he, he's gotten a ton of flips out of the arena on the live circuit. I, th- I think if you did a compilation, it would probably go an hour long. <laughs> so, Eruption gets the win and the three points. And then we have the match. Cherub oh, versus PP3D. This. That sound was my fist hitting the desk. Ugh, this. <sighs> Just. This was the wrong decision. Everything oh, about this was wrong. Let me let me take over here because. Go, go ahead. Basically, what happened was that Cherub just drove forward and it deflected a few hits from PP3D. Then PP3D drove forward and. Hit Cherub once. Cherub. We got her up to speed now, boys. <laughs> that was classic. Mm. And and yeah, and basically, uh, it, PP3D went up full speed. Basically, pulled a Typhoon two like it did to Atomic. Cherub goes 
flying straight into the wall, rips a panel of the wall clean out, and Cherub is laying on its back immobilized. But at the same time, PP3D also got stuck on its disc. So they had to uh, restart the match. For whatever reason, because both robots obviously couldn't move. Why? Why waste this time? Well, yeah. Ha- well, they had to stop it to put the arena wall back. And it on. was like Cherub is obviously dead. PP3D can kind of, sort of move, even though it's stuck on its disc. And who gets the decision? Cherub. What? Let me. I understand that you've built up a bit of a head of steam, and you can oh rant. Oh my god! This. I P- can... people people complain about the Storm Two Typhoon Two decision. You know what? Typhoon Two at least did damage that time. Cherub was, at least in this time, Cherub was, or PP3D was the most destructive, but it, but it, that was a clean knockout, and PP3D, it, it kind of, sort of was mobile, but Cherub was just completely dead. It was clearly much more mo- uh, mobile. Mo- <laughs> PP3D was more mobile! I'm so angry I can barely talk. Yeah, you better go uh, take a chill pill. Ugh. <laughs> I can see why they'd give it the decision, considering that peep, that, uh, Cherub was able, because it was Cherub who was the more aggressive of the two, considering that it was the one driving into PP3D, taking all these hits, because, I mean, other than, like, that one big hit that sent it flying, it was doing a good job of deflecting PP3D's disc. (sighs) Yeah. Well, Uh, (laughs) it's gonna be interesting. I'm There's... pretty sure a lot of fans are going to be oh. mad about that decision. Some, I know one guy on the group said that it was karma for the Series oh. 7 final. And it, it wasn't even the ty- Typhoon team's fault. It was just, Typhoon just got more damage. And, yeah, so Cherub gets the two points, and then we move on to Cherub versus Eruption. This was a nothing fight. Cherub couldn't move. Eruption just Cherub, got underneath Cherub it. Cherub didn't move. I don't think they they moved an inch from no, their starting and Eru- position. Eruption just chucked it out of the arena for the second OOTA for, of the night. That's two for Michael Oates. Behemoth versus PP3D. Oh, we've blown her up now, boys. <laughs> This, this was funny. Behemoth, they, they now got interchangeable scoop weapons, which uh, we'll, we'll get to uh, one of their later ones. But uh, this one uh, was designed to deflect spinners, and in the past, Behemoth has been known to be a pretty mean spinner killer. It beat Hypnodisc, it beat Supernova, it got torn apart by Carbide, but you know what? That's Carbide. Well, it didn't necessarily get torn apart. I mean, it's scoop. The, the scoop was completely ripped out. Well, no, well I wouldn't say, like, it, it, it was... Like, the scoop wasn't ripped off, it was just, like, the the bars were dislodged. Well, and there was a gigantic slice mark in, in the scoop, too. It, it just oh, made a yeah, mess. Oh, yeah, that was, uh, that was pretty cool. So, uh, PP3D tried to get some hits in, but it couldn't really do any damage to Behemoth. Behemoth finally slammed right into PP3D. PP3D goes flying into Shunt's CPZ. Shunt goes AWOL on PP3D, hits the disc, and then all of a sudden... Fireworks start erupting out of PP3D. Yes. Did Gary... Did, Gary, candle. Gary, did you hit the self-destruct button? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Who ne- I thought fireworks were illegal in robot combat. And then, uh, apparently, uh, Behemoth wins by KO, even though uh, PP3D was kind of, sort of moving. I think it beca- it was spinning in one spot, but there was no forward motion. I think, I think that's how one wheel immobilizations should be handled. If a robot is moving in circles, and there's no clear forward movement, then that's then it should be ruled as a KO. But if it has one wheel but can still move in a forward mo, sp- still move forwards and backwards, uh. that's when. Uh, Th- then, you know, don't count it out. Just yeah, look at Apollo well, last season. That performance by PP3D was certainly PP. <laughs> anyway, um... You're so mature, Brandon. <laughs> hey, you're the guy who's going on about anime and stuff. Alright, next match. Eruption versus PP3D. A rematch from last year. And Michael Oates get his revenge. Hey, Brandon, yeah. how did uh, how did Eruption enact its revenge on a PP3D? Four letters, O-O, 
T A. Yep, that's exactly how it did. Yeah, P P three D. The uh, disc um, again. It was like just leaning right against the floor. They couldn't get any any traction to the wheels. You know what I think the problem is? All those names on it. It was weighing the disc down. You know if I if I was took part in that fundraiser for the robot and I got my name on it for that, I'd be pretty upset too. Uh, you sense. know I think. You know what I think the problem is also is that it looks as if the disc is way too close to the ground because when it was flipped over, it could run just fine. I think but it, and that maybe it's because the disc is too heavy. And maybe all the weight is just straining on the motors. So well, that... as you said, I well as you said, it's all those names on the disc that's what's causing the extra. You know, I recognized a few names on that disc. Yeah, I, Isaac Sharp. How, uh, who, who else? I don't know. Well, I only well... know Isaac. Hi, Isaac. Hi, Isaac. <laughs> um. Yeah, eruption gets yet another OTA. <sighs> Behemoth versus Cherub. Oh, Let's God. talk about Behemoth's new weapon. What in God's name was this? Sir General Chomps a lot is looking at this machine and just smacking you know its head in no, dismay. No, Chomps a lot's weapon could work. I don't even know what what this How was supposed to do. How on earth is it? Because I thought those crushers were supposed to go down and, and uh, bite it, but no. It's like, I don't know. I I thought it was supposed to be like a lifter slash clamper. Yeah, like a complete control, but it doesn't even work that way no, either. And th 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 this this match, th there's a lot of this was another judge's decision that I think was completely wrong, because um, Behemoth was uh, on the aggressive most of the time. I mean, Cherub was able to get its forks in every now and then, but Behemoth, this was really funny. Behemoth actually sticks Cherub underneath the flipper. A la Anti B when it got stuck under the flipper and that ant weight melee. Back Didn't in a few battle bots get stuck under the hell razors or something? They've they've been stuck behind the screws. They uh they've been stuck out of the arena and those are automatic KOs. But no, the match had to be uh, restarted because faulty equipment. So fight continues. Behemoth cannot do anything with those crushers. But it's still managing to push Cherub around. It gets it into Dead Metal CPZ. Then Dead Metal starts sawing into the back of Behemoth and I guess into one of Cherub's arms. The match ends. There's a long, long interview segment. I guess uh, it took them a while to decide who who uh, would get the decision. And Cherub won. Uh, you know, I think that this was a more controversial oh, judge's decision than Cherub I can versus imagine it, PB3D. I, I, I feel bad for Anthony Pritchard. He was even pissed. Yeah, like, like, like he, ha he he designed he this whole new out. weapon. He walked out. He designed this whole new weapon. It didn't work. He thought he might have won because <sighs> Cherub. Maybe if they had the scoop weapon, they could have easily beaten Cherub. But this was just a, a, a experiment that just went wrong. Like I would have, I would have loved to see Behemoth and and uh, Eruption in that in that little grudge match in the Heat final. I don't, I don't think I'm sure Eruption would have won anyway. But my God, and you know a Anthony Pritchard, he, he's been doing this for almost twenty years. He's forty now. He he's forty, and and he 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 pulled he, he pulled an Ian Lewis from Series oh, Four after that decision. It, it, it's people. I don't know, Anthony might get hate for it, but you know what? You can tell he was frustrated. Yeah, he, he, you It, it you wasn't know. being a douche. He was just upset with himself that it didn't yeah, work. Yeah, because I get the feeling, because it seemed to me that he said that his teammates, like, he wanted to put the main scoop on, but that his teammates said they should have gone with the clamper, which, I must, I really think that, Anthony was was right if he wanted to use the uh, scoop because he could have easily tossed Cherub around like it was its plaything, but instead it it could do practically nothing against the low robot like Cherub because if it was fighting a higher robot like say Nuts or sure. uh, even I'd say even Aftershock, eh. if or or, or Terra Hurts or Terra Hurts, sure, Terra Terror Hurts, Hurts definitely it could have that's when you put use the jaws into play, but it, it's. It's just a frust it's frustrating to see Anthony lose again because I want to see him do well. I, I wanted to see him through to the grand final, finally. It's just not to be. You know what? The day will come. Ma I maybe, really... ma ma or maybe it's the, it's time for the Behemoth team to build a new bot.
I mean, they have the technology. They built radioactive. It didn't work, but it was certainly something new. Maybe just get like maybe take a page out of maybe uh, aftershocks book. Maybe make a, a drum spinner or something. Or you like know, that. go go with like sewer snake or complete oh, control. Well, this uh, this partially uh, this new weapon kind of was partially sewer snake. It just didn't work. And that brings us to the heat final. I'll take care of this one. Eruption versus Cherub. Cherub moves forward. Eruption gets underneath Cherub. Eruption flips Cherub out of the arena. Six seconds. That was it. I don't know. I, I don't know if this uh, breaks the gravity Dan Tumkia record, but it's it definitely comes close. It'll come down to like, oh god, milliseconds. Ugh. And that was it. Eruption. A very uh, eruption was definitely the best robot here. It just flipped. Yeah, everyone this, this out. was. Unlike the last heat, which was, you know, it really could have gone be- between Terahertz and uh, Sabretooth and Aftershock, it really does feel like this was a one, like this was a one robot heat. Yeah. So that was basically it. This episode was nowhere near as good as the first one. Though next week we've got a very exciting one. Oh, yes. We've got Chimera 2, Concussion. Expulsion, Foxic, Heavy Metal, Mr. Speed Squared, Toron, and my mum's favorite, Thor. Yeah, so that should be a fun heat. I'm... I want to say Thor, but I think this time around, I want to see Foxic win. Yeah, and I'm, I'm picking Thor. I mean, Jason, he's, he's had a lot of bad luck, but it's time he goes through to the grand final, beats everyone's ass, finally takes home that giant floor... I don't want to quote Mr. Psycho here, so uh, I'm just going to call it a floor spike thing. Drill. The giant, uh, <clears throat> the the most phallic-looking trophy ever. We'll leave it at that. So, uh, this was another edition of the Hardcore Podcast covering Robot Wars, the Ninth Wars Heat B. It, it was kind of a rush job, but, but, but it was a very quick heat. Yep, and we wanted to get it out of, out of the way so we don't forget anything. Um, one last little comment before we sign off. Um, I must say the one robot that I'm most looking forward to fight, because there's a lot of cool looking robots in the next heat. I, I like, I really, I'm loving heavy metal. I like the look of heavy metal. It's going to be great seeing John Denny and his family in the arena. Oh yeah. But I, the one machine that to me is a dark horse, I am loving concussion. Yeah. It's got a big drum on it. Looks like it can really do some damage. It kind of reminds me of Sabretooth, except orange and a little bit more solidly built. I gotta say, though, I'm looking forward to seeing Tim and his mighty mohawk. <laughs> and, so, so that covers it, guys. And his ta- and his Robot Wars tattoo that's oh, that. on his leg. Oh, that that's the best. That just about covers it, guys. Tune in next Sunday when we cover Heat C. Until then, I'm the Hardcore Kid. And I'm Otaku Nate. Saying peace out and cease. Don't take any wooden nickels.